you're muted, Pete. Yeah, talking to my wife. She's taking the dog. Oh, okay. Out. <laughs> I didn't know you were trying to say something. Good. Hi, everyone. So this is Flotilla Friday, April 1st. Um, happy April Fool's Day. I hope there will be plenty of pranks and jokes today. <laughs> um, so we have some new folks here today. Welcome, everyone. Um, wondering if we should do a quick round of introductions since there are so many new faces or um yeah i don't know wendy if you wanted to start since i know <laughs> um yeah, thank you for so yeah I'm, I'm wendy mclean my feet are planted today in new york um and i am super excited about today's meeting i've been coming to flotilla for about a oh gosh nine months or so and um, love these meetings for the connection and celebration and friendliness and welcomingness that Vincent and Pete bring. And today I'm super excited because I've asked um, Geary, who some of us know, um, and, and our other good friend, Gien, to come and talk about their projects. Yeah. So um, we are excited to see what sort of synergies emerge today. That's me. I'll go. Hey y'all, uh, this is my first one. Uh, I'm Aaron. Um, I live in Hamden, Connecticut. I um, moved up to Connecticut from, um, from Florida in 2007. My uh, line of work is uh, user experience design as it applies to human computer interfaces. And uh, my wife and I own a um, nonprofit consultancy. Well, it, the, it's a for-profit business, but we consult to nonprofits um, largely around um, data capture and program design and program theory. Uh, my background's in uh, development for the marketing vertical for marketing industry, and uh, I connect the design teams to uh, development teams. So that, that handoff between the concept of what needs to be built and the um, actual implementation of, of the technology. I can go next. Um, I'm Drabo Keith. I've been in uh, OGM for uh, a couple of years, I think, for our, I don't know how long it's been going. Um, I have used the Brain software for a long time. So that's how I came across Jerry, and that's how I came across OGM. Um, I'm interested in uh, shared mapping tools. So I've had a lot of conversations with Wendy and Pete and some others about that about those and uh, this is my first flotilla call and uh, always interested to engage with people and uh, hear hear what they're what tools and approaches they're using to make sense of the world um, seems to be all the rage and i'm in arlington virginia next go next. Hi, everyone. My name is Vincent Arena. I'm the founder of Catalyst Collective. We're making an ecosystem of tools to work together in order to catalyze collective intelligence and help people connect with information that matters to them and that's relevant uh, without getting overwhelmed with the, the stream and the flood of constant notifications. And um, have not solved that problem yet, but um, I'm very excited that I feel like I'm approaching it tangentially, like closer and closer each day. Um, and for anyone who's new to Flotilla, one of the you know, main focuses of the things that we talk about is um, tools for connection, matchmaking, uh, with a particular focus on interoperability and how we can build and design tools to be able to work together collaboratively and also to uh, have different perspectives on, all right, so in some cases we might want to, you know, find each other so we can come together and merge projects. Um, and in other ways, it's really useful being around people who are working on the same problem, but from a completely different direction so that we also get a diversity of solutions and then start to come to a greater synthesis of how to solve problems in a more holistic way. Okay. Hello, hello. My name is Judy Lajos. Uh, 
I think I knew about uh, Jerry's brain six, seven years ago, and I loved when he said, I remind Boggles, how come not everybody is doing this? And this is civilization level importance. My co-founder banned me to use this phrase uh, four years ago, five years ago, but uh, by now I'm allowed to use this phrase. So, and uh, I, I'm, I'm here not for the first time with Flotilla. I think I had some idea of linking where the technology that I hope to, hope, to, hope to talk about today can help, but it was admittedly very, very early stages. I didn't realize at the time that I need another nine months to, to, to actually mature the ideas. So I'm, I'm glad to be back and, uh, and hopefully it's really, and I, I'm really here uh, to, to get feedback because uh, as Pete said, and I've been following his advice over the last two years, if you want to build something, tweet about it. Don't go and build late binding, you know. You get so much further if you don't code, but think and talk and, 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 and engage with people and problems. So, and again, uh, again we've, we've been working together since August. I don't know what's happening. Friday is his bad day, so probably this whole time couldn't make it because he's clearly not around. So, which is a pity because he's he, he can tell about tell what I I am building better than I can. I can build it, but he can tell me what I'm building much better than I can. So we're gonna miss him. But there you are. Thank you very much. Who's next? I don't know. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Jerry. Yeah. Um, Good go. Go for it, Mark Antoine. Yeah. Um, Mark Antoine Perrin, um, I know Jerry well, <laughs> been uh, on the same quest for a long time, though from different angles. Uh, he's mostly interested in making the personal experience of creating this personal knowledge for emerging knowledge happen. And uh, I'm interested in the federation of emerging knowledge and what that means in terms of comparing and defining and uh, finding the differences between worldviews. So uh, this started with very old work on a project then called Assemble for um, creating, uh, extracting ideas from a web forum. And now it's become a totally different quest with hyper knowledge. Over. Uh, I'll go. Uh, I'm uh, Peter Kaminsky. I'm in San Diego right now. And um, Vincent and I are, are probably the co hosts kind of of Flotilla. Um, I wanted to, to kind of restate what, what Vincent said. Um, maybe it'll add some flavor. Maybe, it, maybe it'll just be duplicative. Um, but uh, the original name of Flotilla was uh, Flotilla Tools for Connectors. So a uh, big part of it is you've got database uh, di directories, uh, directories and other structures that hold a lot of information. Um, how can you connect people to the information and how can you connect people using the information? Connect you know, one, one, one individual to another individual or one individual to a, a, a group of organization or something like that. Um, interoperability is also really important to us. Uh, the, the core group uh, for a while, um, or I, I guess uh, we've, got, we've got, actually most of us work as makers of uh, systems. Uh, so I'm working on massive wiki along with some other things. Michael's working on Factor, Wendy's working on Tapestry, Vincent's working on uh, Catalyst, Marc Antoine is working on uh, Hyperknowledge, Jerry is working on, on trail marks and things like that. Um, so the, when we get together, the flotilla of folks who have been getting together, we're super interested in, in just interoperability. Um, how can you represent a resource um, in each of our systems? How can you represent um, a piece of information, how can you rep re represent a person's profile, things like that. Um, and I feel like we're making progress, uh, although um, it's, it's fits and starts still and a lot of stuff published. Uh, we've also got connectivity to some other groups. Um, through Michael, we're kind of connected to the CTA Collaborative Tech Alliance. 
um, maybe through me, we're a little bit connected to FedWiki. Um, Vincent's got other connections. So welcome um, and uh, thanks yeah. for being here. I've mentioned a connection to the Canonical Debate Lab. Um, there's, there's a, uh, uh, I, I'll, I'm going to do a content thing rather than a check-in thing real quick. Um, um, uh, there's, uh, Rob uh, has been working on uh, nuggets of uh, information. Uh, he, he called them nuggets. Uh, it's, and, and they're similar to something that I call micro narratives. Both of us were working in the uh, sense making for emergent events space when we were thinking of nuggets or micro narratives. Um, I had an interesting, uh, and uh, as Rob says in chat, uh, nuggets is uh, a word from Jerry. Uh, Jerry's got a thing he calls nugget, nuggets narratives and something else. And I'll put a link to that in the chat when I stop talking. Um, Micro, micro narrative is my term also uh, collides with uh, some other technical use of that term. So I don't mean what other people mean necessarily by it. Um, so Jerry's got kind of an idea of, um, uh, uh, he, I, I think, I don't know if he, he uses this with capital letters or he just said it and then I heard it or something like that, but he's this idea of link everything. And it seemed to Jerry and I, as we were talking this week, that um, uh, the, the micro narratives, nuggets, maybe uh, clues is a little bit richer than, um, than what we've been using to match people, match things up. It's not just a category of things, but it's more like, um, uh, I'll, I'll rat rattle off a simple one um, that I don't know if Rob wrote down or not. Um, and maybe it's too simple to write down, but. There's a narrative among some people, not everybody, but some people would say that Vladimir Putin is evil, you know, as, a, as an example of something. Or some people would say Vladimir Putin is a hero uh, of, you know, of our society or something like that. So that's different and, and a little bit richer as a way to connect things than just a category like world leaders or Russian leaders or Vladimir Putin as a category. Um, so that came up with me and Jerry, and then in a conversation with uh, Mark Anton and David Bovel and Wendy Alford, uh, we got deep into that uh, uh, from a technical perspective that I can't even keep up with kind of, um, but conversation theory and, um, and things like that. So, so um, I, don't have a, I don't have a good handle for this for Flotilla, but it seems like important um, and, uh, and something that hopefully will kind of like emerge out of it, it's a it's an interoperability and connectivity thing that sounds really rich and interesting and like many of us I think would be interested in it. Thanks. So I think we're still doing check-ins. I apologize for throwing content in here, but I got excited. Um, who's next with a check-in? Go for it, Eric. Hi everybody. I'm Eric Grangel. I live in Pennsylvania, and. Um, I'm interested in applications of Ted Nelson's and Douglas Engelbart's ideas, how they can be brought forward and modernized and used with new technologies, uh, decentralized technologies. So I'm just exploring them on my own and I'm making a series of videos of what I play with. Now looking at us, it looks like the Brady Bunch or Hollywood Squares right now. And I actually did a video relating the Brady Bunch to uh, Ted Nelson's uh, zigzag. And I made an April Fool's video today about uh, talking to extraterrestrials using IPFS. So here's the link. That's the whole playlist. So you could go back afterwards and look at all the videos. Thanks. I'll jump in. Um, I'm, I'm Michael Grossman, and um, I've uh, been coming to Flotilla gatherings for about a year, I think. Um, uh, discovered them via OGM, which I've just been at for a year and a half or so. 
Um, and uh, I am, um, as, as Pete mentioned, I'm a developer of a, of a platform. Um, it's called Factor, and I've been working on it for a number of years. And it's a built, but still, still toddling along, you know, as, as a, an infant um, wanting to grow. Um, platform for uh, gathering, organizing, and sharing um, information that matters to people. Um, and, uh, and its particular point of difference um, is providing people with a way to control their attention. Um, it's ad-free, uh, member-supported on a freemium model, um, and uh, a way to filter what's coming in to your view, organize what you choose to save and share only with intention. Uh, um, so uh, I'm also active in a lot of groups, some of which have been mentioned and maybe I'll provide some links to some of the others, but um, the Collaborative Tech Alliance, as, as Pete mentioned, um, the, uh, the Center for Humane Technology, where I've helped with their coursework, um, All Tech is Human, the Credibility Coalition, Pro Social Design Network, uh, and yeah, I love I love being in this group. I always get something out of it, and, and uh, interoperability is is the holy grail. And we're all trying to figure out how we put what we're doing together. So thanks. So it looks like Jerry is um, <laughs> being distracted by his gorgeous cat. A beautiful cat, yes. Aww. So I think kind of top of the agenda, if you don't mind me jumping in here, Pete, is to, um, and Vincent, yeah, is to have you, Jerry, do a little presentation on what you're up to. Um, I just want to let everybody know that a couple of weeks ago, um, since Jerry, Gian, and I were all part of a um, a Winfinity um, framework inquiry cluster. We got to know each other better. Um, we didn't necessarily get to know each other's work real, real deeply until about, I don't know, a month ago or so where I got to see a full demo of what Gary and Gen were working on. And then next meeting the next day, I had Flotilla and I said, I really think it would be a great space to see that demo again and have other people who are working in similar frameworks, um, thinking about similar things and aiming towards similar visions come together. Um, thank you all for the, you know, thank you to the other people who are kind of heard the call today and came to hear uh, the demo. Um, I do have a document that I started to put together from different postings and conversations that Gary and Gen um, and I are where we're in similar spheres. And so I will share that afterwards so that you know, we don't, we're not distracted by that, but that's so you have something to, to take away from today um, so that you can reference it. Um, and with that, Gary, I think I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, thank you. I just check, check once more what, whether Gian is around, but uh, no, he isn't. Okay, that's fine. Uh, <clears throat> Before I start, uh, just a second, where is that? Yes, I would like to share you this link. Uh, it's not quite a demo, but uh, it's sort of part of it. But come on, I need that, I need that, yeah. Uh, this is really just uh, the way uh, Indie Lab, that's the name nowadays, Trail Max, all that stuff, is uh, integrating with, uh, with hypothesis annotations and there is a, if there's just one concept I would like to to talk more about in the discussion, and of course I want discussion more than anything, is this concept of web intents. I learned about web intents because I thought, well, what I'm doing is perhaps best described as web native web intents. So I went to Google and I found that uh, Chrome and Google been working on it forever. Anybody knows what an intent is in Android? 
Yeah, I need to explain because otherwise nothing will work. The whole point is that if you are on Android and you watching a YouTube video and, uh, and you would like to share with somebody, there is a share button. And when you press that share button, then web intents basically it's a it's a, pro, it's a, a convention within android which says it says applications can register what kind of intents they can handle so when you say web in, you you, share, you press the share button all the applications that are that are on your device that can handle that intent will be listed and you can select uh, which one you want to use but this is critical because this is critical you should talk about it. The critical thing is interoperability is really just can be that deep as, as exchangeability. Because if, if you like, it means I don't care what, as long as you make clear what the intent is, you know, application can make sure that they can handle it. So that's a, that's a very, very important uh, way of, of, of interoperating. And, the, and I realized that the whole indie hub, everything I'm doing is really making it generalize it that and really make it work on the web, across the web. That's the, that's the idea. And the key here, and just to summarize what, what I'm gonna talk, the key here is that the problem with web intents is the complexity of the web itself, because it's a client server model, which really makes it really complex and difficult. Now with IPFS, I, can't have go into the details. Once you can have a have have a way of because that is what these people were working on. It these are the people who struggled with web intents, pushed for local first progressive web apps, so that we the dream is that that the web can be as uh, interoperable at least as the as your device. So so essentially, <clears throat> essentially that 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 is really the most important uh, thing that. Uh, if you have, uh, if you, if with IPFS or name data addressing, the whole network is the database. The network, the there is no server needed, so you can be web native. Everything is only running in your browser, which has great implications for privacy and everything. So that's it. So and I, I put this this there because anything that you find in the talk, I won't have time to explain anything. There are 120 concepts here, so. <laughs> but you, you, if, if there's anything that you, 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 you search for it in there, you will find relevant annotations. So, okay, okay, let me see. This is, uh, uh, I don't know how long do I have, what, 15 minutes, can I, or 10 minutes? What, what as as long as you need, Yuri. Okay, that's, that's good news. Yeah, okay, so this is, this is really getting to the point where it's sort of, come come through time dream come true time i've been doing this four years ago with the very same reveal thing but at that time i was uh, faking till i made it okay i think out of that all, only thing i want is this one uh, and uh, so so the idea is that this is now this is real okay i have my mind graph i had my my whole uh, whole uh, associative thing network thinking tool everything but the and that was originally the idea the idea that you you go to somewhere and re take re, re input your stuff again just to get a presentation is insane what you need and this is what i'm doing now i actually start writing with a presentation but everything i have in the presentation is contact con contagious con is the, is part of my richer knowledge gap so you can actually mix and match and so it's the whole the, the real real idea is 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 uh, the, the most important thing is is that uh, stop the siloing stop you know make all knowledge just part of a global giant graph and that graph should actually include the people so it's a, a global giant social knowledge graph i i, I built one like that uh, with google plus and by the time it was kind of ready to ship, Google Plus was suddenly sh shut down. So this is the thing, we really need, we need all that. We need a, a, so, a, a social knowledge graph, which is, uh, which, is, uh, which is ours. Okay, so I start now. Uh, so this is now really my actual working. This is not just created for a presentation. This is the way I gather the Get together this quarter's whole project plan. 
So that that's really Wait, that part. Jury, yeah, did you start sharing? Because I'm not seeing any. Screen oh, here. come on. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I did enjoy once uh, Mark Antoine gave a presentation and didn't turn on the presentation. And it was just so good, really. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because, you see it now. Yeah, OK. Because, because it, it allowed, allowed me to focus and, 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 uh, on, on what he's saying and not get distracted. With the, with the, with the, uh, these, these slides won't be that destructive. So, so basically, this is, this, is, this is, oh, I should show you this as well. Wow, that's it. So this, this is for real. This is the way I actually work. I create in trail marks these things. And in fact, uh, I actually quite like just this presentation style when I work in here, but of course it's, it's better to read that. So there's, I want this continuity, continuity between the work. So, uh, so I, this is really my, this presentation is, is basically, I'm trying to bring together in, in one place, everything that I need to, need to get this bootstrapping process for the next stage. Uh, so this is really just the starting point from which everything will get linked. And the point is that uh, unlike in a wiki, it's not the, uh, uh, the, the, you won't see any links here, or, or many links actually, you won't see, because everything is, 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 uh, every, is, everything is searchable and, 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 and addressable. So, so in fact, I haven't, haven't finished with that, but basically it's very same like Rome, when you are on a page, everything that is linked to it in, an, in either auto-associative way or through association, show you in a in a, in a in a in a hyper map on the side or whatever accessible so uh, yeah okay and, and i'm here to talk to prospective collaborators because <laughs> that and uh, yeah, you talk about this i really think that that uh, the work we're trying to do is is to is to provide the stone soup so not the not everybody solving the same problem uh, a, a new paradigm but but we can actually actually work together on it uh, okay, there's another other presentation I'm not going to go to that. So, and the, the, the most important thing here that I'm really been focusing, don't say really again, uh, been focusing on the idea that it ain't what you do, it's the way that you go do it. That's what gets results. And what's wrong with, what is wrong with what we're doing is not necessarily what we're doing, but the way it is all set up, the very centralized nature of the web dictates those abuses and problems that we actually experience in practice. So you really got to rethink the whole thing. Uh, so so in, in, in here I will, will be just, just uh, this is Bosworth City. Web native, we will come back to it, although I, I, I hopefully some of it was understandable, but some of these we should be immediately understood. So it's personal. So this is the really local first in the pre progressive web apps. So that whatever, whatever data, whatever information you engage with, you must have an offline copy of. That's a basic rule. Without that, you know, if you don't have that, you have nothing. And of course, it's got to be interpersonal. I think uh, Steve Jobs, in, when he was in the wilderness building next, he actually thought, well, the next frontier is, okay, we done personal computing. The next one will be the interpersonal computing. And I'm sure everybody here, veterans of the web know that that's exactly what we were expecting. Oh, that he, and there is some interpersonality possibility and in the, in, the, in, the, in the web is actually doing it, but you require a server, which is obviously too difficult. And, um, and it's intentional constellations. Intentional, it's really, this is good, I started with that. In, the intent is that there's a, there's a clear way of articulating or signaling what is it that you want from the computer to accomplish. So that's what the Android intents introduce this concept. But it's obvious that what it really needs, we really, we don't say really, need to, need to model intents, not just knowledge. And the, the beauty of it, this is, this is what I, I, I realized 2006, that uh, if you want to improve software design and software, the whole software engineering, you got to just sort out knowledge engineering because no, software is just knowledge. So the very same problem that we, that we use for domain is, the, is really, and of course, eventually later on, that was Shimon, you actually did intentional software, but we're not gonna go there. And the other very important thing, it got to be common based peer produced. 
it's not the key is not that 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 you open source that's not that that's not so important it, the, the important is that it's thinkable and the and what's the point is there you know windows is open or anything is open source the amount the, the your ability to actually tweak it to yourself is not open so when i talk about open oh, i didn't didn't write in it should be open common base we produce open i mean that it's easy to use easy to tinker easy to change that that's the, that's the most important thing and and really the you know, software as a network conversation that's what that's what it but uh, okay, but I had that interpreter. Yeah, unenclosable. I don't know whether you know this concept, but it basically means it cannot be shut down. It really is the whole domain system is is enclosed. If they don't like you, you can be wiped off the internet. And uh, so, unenclosable. It is a very important feature for this. Is all I didn't have a written it in. It's all about personal digital autonomy. Because if you don't have that, we have nothing. You know, freedom of speech is a matter of freedom of reach. So we, we so the interpersonal reach should be free too. So okay, and I, I'm an autopoietic, sympathetic. Sympathetic is mutual learning. This is this. I love this word because Je, Je, Jessica Kerr had an amazing talks about it. She basically says, and she's right, that software design production is really a mutual learning. You learn what is required. And you create it, and it's and the whole process is just a learning process. So I, I really like that. Uh, and the the other the other aspect is that it, it should be people centered. That that that's it. It just it just like a Copernican revolution. We really need to envisage a whole new system, which is people centered. So the, so it's an end of master slave setup, because at the moment. Uh, the ethos is okay. People are treated as machine agent. There is no difference between agent and people. No, we should create computer systems which are meaningful first, useful, useful first for people. So that, and in a way, that machine can do something with it. I mean, the semantic we did the exactly the opposite. Okay, it assumed there is some mess of data out there which people can understand, but it was all about empowering the machines. And of course, we have feedback we did empower us, but I, I'm seeking uh, direct uh, man machine in, uh, augmentation. And the point is that all these things that is going on at the web, precisely because it's, cent it's centralized, it benefits the aggregators first, people secondary. And of course, the, the big shift is the complexity in the computing world, in web or anywhere, is coming from the idea that, oh, machines should be able to control and dictate, and we, should, we trust the machines, we don't trust the people. We, could, we should change that. We could, we could create, create people who are, are able to connect based on trust, and that's a different, different that opens up a new way. So that's really the, that's the hard, hard question. And so we actually get arrived at networks of trust. So, and we can do that because uh, because we, we not only do we have content addressable, name data addressability, so it's all out there, but uh, but uh, the intents themselves, which intents a very broad sense, but we uh, won't have time to 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 articulate these subtleties. But it basically means that you have a human readable name. And that's equivalent to you install the application. And you, you discovering, you don't need to go to some, some, uh, some centralized controlled app store because you can just discover any, any, any application that is in the universe and just by, by naming it, you use it. And because of the pre WA aspect, the, the progressive web app aspect, that is equivalent to you actually once used it, you installed it in your browser. So that really changes the every way. And uh, and the the the, web, the the intents really guarantee guarantees that every capability should be interchangeable. And the the, the way 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 interoperability is so is very much like solid, as long as the, your application maps into a common or or just common graph model. And easily, easily 
writable and, and human readable graph model, which doesn't really look like graph, it's trail marks, then, then, then you, can, you can make your articulation of what you do uh, contiguous with your data modeling. And it, of course, it's got to be co-evolving and, the, and because it's all, uh, all uh, but once you've got multiple people's, people working on this thing, it really allows you to co-evolution. Co and, the, and the point is that we don't just create data and knowledge, but we share knowledge with the appropriate ways of presenting that knowledge. So it's no longer being obsessed about knowledge representation, but it's really for us, for humans, the important thing is the way you present it, is the way you present that for, 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 for usability and all that. Uh, so now I'm getting to the what, uh, what, what is it? Uh, I spent, why now, if you take this account, you know, 10, 15 years trying to get the it right. There is this saying, you know, get it right first time. And I went against the, exactly the opposite. I, if I can clearly specify what is it that I'm going to build, I'm not even interested in building it. I'm interested in, 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 in generative capabilities, which makes possible with these goals that, I, that we have described in mind. And um, OK, this, and that, that le leads to that this kind of fractal and enclosure autonomous of conversation. That's what we want to be able to uh, make possible. Not that we go to LinkedIn or whatever, or Telegram, and we have a bit of conversation, which is siloed and separate from everything else. All the, all the interaction with, with, with knowledge and information should come to me, us stay with us and we should be able to directly share with whoever, whatever, whenever we want. Uh, I think that's important. And the key, the why it is possible, apart from, re, from the browser is, re, is getting, getting really powerful, that there is this idea of uh, I, not, just, not just semantics, semantic, what, 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 what that is or what we know, that's not, that is not enough. We really need to be able to find a way of articulating the intentions. And that's where trail marks comes in, but I won't have time for that. Uh, but that, 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 that in itself is, is, is a separate thing. But, uh, and uh, because of the way Indie Hub, or actually uh, just today, I, I realized that it's not Indie Hub, uh, that is, that is uh, uh, Web App Hub or, web, or, or Indie Hub. Yeah, in the art problem, I don't know what uh, it will be there, the new name for it. So I want to distinguish between, between uh, people being their hub, them, hub to themselves to spawn their own network of connections and distinguish that from communities or things that would normally would be a server. So when it, when it is a delegated or, a, or, a co, or, or not an individual, but, but, but something, something larger unit. Uh, Okay, so in terms of this is this is uh, some of you in the OGM you probably know Matt Sire had this amazing idea of this dream space. But the only thing that I want to bring here is is the first of all you 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 uh, the system is as it is now it brings to mind what I have in mind. I just the search and because of the interfingering and the capturing of that, the search is so much more powerful and I can actually resume whole entire associative complexes when I work. So, so it really bring, brings to me what I need to do and, and, uh, and the annotation combined enables me to experience the web as an extension of my mind and the everybody's mind. And uh, uh, I love, love that phrase, when the everybody, everyone's wisdom. <laughs> I love that, yes. Uh, and uh, uh, so, the, this trail marks allows you this network uh, thing, writing, and the point is that we inject the intent, the semantics, the significance as we write. That's what trail marks enables you to do, and uh, so you end up with a much, much richer uh, world of explicit, uh, explicated, or ex externalized uh, intent, meaning, relevance, significance. And because I don't think I, I say this later. Uh, our mutual learning. The point is that because we, you, you have peer-to-peer, -peer, peer to community, community to peer, and all kinds of topologies are, can be supported, communication, and it can be done in such a way 
that even the reading has a full history. Even the reading is attributed. So basically, uh, when anybody use, uses this, this, uh, this uh, stone soup, stone for their soup, they have instant, not instant communities around their applications. They can, they can interact. They can, they can, uh, they can uh, themselves manage it. But the, but the important thing about it is that uh, <clears throat> that uh, we can actually, if you want, if you, if you, if we agree, we can make it open. This is what we're going to be doing with Open Learning Commons. That that you should be able to share your learning in such a way that the entire scaffolding with which whatever you wrote being erected is accessible forever. So that's another thing, it's permanent. That's, that, that's, that's also very important, which really means, which means that uh, you don't just have the justified true belief knowledge, but you have the entire path to it. So you can revisit and recapitulate and rethink what you, what you learned. And in fact, you end up with, if you, if you work in both collaboratively, true valid learning path can emerge. So this is, this is the mixture of the knowledge management and the technology, but the two are mutually arising. That, that's very important. So hopefully with this, uh, Eric, as you said, yes, this is the 60th anniversary of the debut of the uh, public demo of a dream of uh, augmenting humanity, which what, what's in the abstract, it says that's what I've been wanting to do ever since I was 16 is, uh, improving the intellectual effectiveness of the individual human being. If you don't do it, that, that's the key. If, and the, at the moment, we're going in the opposite direction. So, once the, and, and the, but it's also very important that you got to be able to join because what is important is knowledge synthesis. Every time, I mean, uh, as, as they say, you know, don't prepare the words, prepare the feelings and the understanding and the awareness so you can you can build on it so you can you can tell it much shorter than it may take a long long path to get somewhere but you should be able to tell it shorter that's the point that's the recapitulation that's where the 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 whole technology of, of uh, provenance is really important and uh, i didn't say but when, when i'm talking about build from trust for trust is really just coming out of ipfs that it is it is a system it's not a trustless system uh, it is a trusted system, but trust, but verify. So that, that's, that, that's really the, 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 the paradigm shift. Oh, and of course, uh, we, this, is, this is what uh, we're what, what working also. They, underneath here, here, we have an interpersonal, intentional, personal first intentional knowledge graph. I think I changed, put the intentional there later. Uh, so now this is, this is when I'm literally writing my plan for the next quarter and this document, uh, we don't, oh, it's going, going to be the master document, the, the MAVEN, the project comprehension. And in fact, I already have project planning tracking, but instead of having a separate project planner tracker and whatever, everything is intertwined is in there. And you can recall as, you, as, 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 as it's needed. Uh, so, uh, and our homebrew, I call it homebrew, but it's the, 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 the idea is that, that uh, any capability you engage with it, uh, is, uh, is, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's open source, the important thing that the intent and the, and the communication, the interfaces are open. That's the key. And the way of defining the interfaces is open. That's, that's the really important thing. Uh, okay. Oh, what did I do? I didn't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, so I am mean, back to back to where I was 15 years ago. It even worked on me on Windows Mobile, a full project comprehension tool, but it was it didn't have the the depth of the knowledge management that I really needed. And to understand this whole uh, technology, it's all about uh, separating the domain whatever is the application is about and how you do it. The current way of doing it is it's a product. What the current way of doing things is that you want to deliver an application, then you ask your, ask your client, okay, you have, uh, do we have to, to, how many concurrent users you have? What kind of availability you need? 
And all these questions give you a unique path in a, in a monster technological layer stock and platform. So you make the choice of the platform, make all these technical choices, and they dictate how you're gonna express the domain knowledge, which means that, uh, that it is the product of the aspects of what kind of system you want to deliver. And the domain is a product, the effort needed. And here you change it. No, 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 it's just the domain we can articulate on its own. I'm not even, you don't even need to mandate how you do it. So it's not that. The important thing is that we factor out all the questions of create, lead, update, delete, search, whatever, and it's making it message, message driven. That really means that underneath, I can have a database, I can have whatever I want. Doesn't matter what it is. It, so so just, the, just what the application does shouldn't depend on how we actually deliver it. And the, the best thing is that, of course, it works on the web. That's the real thing. That's what I'm interested in. It should be possible to use for other things, but that's all I'm interested in because web is the, is the one platform that uh, allows that. So with the messaging, you get loose scalping and absolutely not only late binding, but you got permanence of software because the data that you process can come with the, with, the, with, the, with the verifiable name of the version of the system that, you, that, that it works with. And of course, in this setting, you should be able to then say, okay, when you get a new version, you must be able to identify what was the previous thing, you must be able to upgrade. And you can actually go back in the chain and if you like, go recapitulate the entire history at any time in the future. That's, that's the team. So we really end up with a kernel, as Alan K would say, that that's what the bar rather should have been, and web intents. And this is instead of plugins where, where you build a big system, and because people like this, they can extend it to, for themselves. It's the other way around. Every little capability you can plug out to. And I, I probably will give you one little demo for this so that you see something more. Oh, I don't know what happened. Okay. Touch something which I shouldn't have. No. Never mind. Okay. Uh, I, 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 th I think I just, uh, just show you this little one. And, 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 and close, because I closed it, so don't mind. So this is, this is how uh, I, what is it doing here? This is, this is my way of plug, plugging out to Web3 storage. I don't know if you, if you ever heard of Web3 storage. If you go there, you should be able to click on this. So this is, this is, the, this is Firecoin RPFS, and you can, uh, you can, uh, you can sign up, it gives you one terabyte of content addressable storage. Uh, it may not be as fast as, as S3, but it, even in the future, it will be radically cheaper uh, because it's really like torrent. It, it's, it's out there, it's in the network, the data is, and of course you can, if you want, you can, you can store it, store it encrypt it. And therefore that you really need fission, which would handle the web native encryption and everything else. So, um, okay, okay. I just, what's this doing here? Okay, okay, just to just, uh, okay, generate the slides again, just to see it in action. Okay, so we, we, we're here. Okay, let me stop. Just see if I've got anything else left. No, I think I think um, oh that I can ignore that. I think it's it, it's enough. So uh, I think I should just stop here and stop sharing. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jerry. <clears throat> I I see. Uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, Jen is here. Again, Jen. Again, hi, Jen. Oh, hello. Hi, hello. hi everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was late. No worries. We got started without you. Better for better or worse. Uh, uh, do you want to introduce me? 
And I was hoping to do a double act. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you want me to introduce myself? Is that what you were saying? Yes, uh, please. If, if you're interested to do, yes, that, that would be great. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, so my name is Gian, or um, James Wong is my legal name. I am uh, from the country that Marc Antoine lives in, originally, <laughs> Canada. <laughs> um, originally from uh, the West Coast, Vancouver, but moved to South Africa when I married my wife 15 years, 14 years ago. And so I've been living in uh, South Africa all this time, Cape Town now. And um, I, uh, I am, my main activity that I've been um, engaged in for the last number of years is trying to uh, develop um, with other people, um, rapid whole system change solutions for the planet, uh, bottom up rapid whole system change solutions. So I've spent the last 10 years doing transdisciplinary sense making, um, spent a lot of time in the commons with people like Michelle Bowens of the Peer to Peer Foundation, working on his, their latest project uh, called Cosmo Local, Cosmo Localism or Cosmo Local Production, which is all about leveraging the internet to um, share uh, design knowledge, and then um, to go into local production, uh, local clean circular production uh, with that design knowledge. So it's a new production paradigm that we we're kind of championing and that I'm also integrating into the rapid whole system change uh, strategies that I've been developing. Um, and so uh, when I met Jury a couple of years ago, a couple of, well, last year, I um, hit it off with them because what he's doing in terms of software um, melds and synergizes with what I'm doing um, with trying to mobilize um, and accelerate the change, uh, the system change that's required. So I work with um, earth system scientists and um, deal with concepts like planetary boundary and um, a number of other frameworks to I'm trying to integrate them all together. And I find that Jerry's system, the when I met him was um, was ideal um, framework for doing that. So we've been working ever since uh, trying to co-develop it. And um, I guess the aspects I bring to what Jerry's doing is the kind of like the um, well, of course, I don't know if you all know, but Jerry's um, did his PhD in um, philosophy of science, <laughs> so uh, and I, physics, um, not a PhD. and physics. No, yes. yeah, not the PhD, <laughs> just the first degree. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think that's one very strong um, resonance uh, that Jerry and I have. We um, we see that technology is is in service of the hu the humanity. So the humanity is a, always a big part of our discussion. The philosophy, the anthropology, um, the sociology, the psychology. So that's um, over, I, I would say half of our discussion is about that. Then, then and the epistemology, epistemology. Epistemology, ontology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we, we uh, go through all those things and, and then we finally, we, we end up saying, okay, how do we articulate that in the software? You know, so it all, it's all driven by the human aspects. And so it's, yeah, I'm very excited to, to work with Jerry on that because uh, I'm, I'm not in the programming world myself, but um, I bring a lot of other ideas outside from the outside to complement what he's doing. Yeah. So that's me in a nutshell. Thanks. Any questions? Uh, Jerry said that you could explain what he's doing better than he can. Yes, that's true. And and I wonder if, like, in a minute or so, you could kind of, I, you you kind of already hit why why you're interested in kind of what's going on. Okay. But... Okay, minutes are pretty hard, a tough sell, but uh, I can try. Um, maybe mm -hmm. what I can do is I can. One of the points, one of the really key points that I I. I think that's in my mind right now, I explained to Wendy um, in emails this, or chats this morning and also last night, 
is this idea of uh, we we kind of um, create this new terminology called the multi meaning verse. So the meaning verse is the um, the, I, the the collective ideas that, uh, that that have meaning to us as individuals in in the world. So each one of us has a meaning verse, like, um, and I have my own, and Wendy and Jerry and everybody here. But when we come together in a conversation, like here we are here now, or in any other um, social situation where there's more than one person. Um, you have multiple meaning verses converging. So, so the, hence the term multi-meaning verse. And so this kind of ties in with the, one of the, um, one of the um, praxis that I've been working with is called deep humanity. And in that praxis, um, one, of the, one of the key concepts is um, Ed, Edwin, or Edward Husserl's um, concept of the Lebenswelt, um, that there are multiple consciousness that um, can, can exist sharing some public reality. And so um, that's just saying the obvious in a sense. That, that so we all have our own worlds that we live in, our own life worlds, and um, we have unique perspectives of, of reality. But when we come together, we share them. So in the Indiverse, the, what Jury is doing is really melds quite perfectly with that concept of the multi-meaning verse that is so important in looking at how conflicts arise in the world, how misunderstandings arise, and also how new ideas can emerge from um, groups of people. And so it's, it's kind of like a sociological, psychological framework that can actually um, merge really nicely with, with the indie lab and all the stuff that Jerry's doing. Um, it's, it's kind of a refreshing new way of looking at things, uh, framework. Yeah. So that's one idea that I think is quite relevant to share. Thanks. Welcome. If I may, uh, I've been following what Jerry's been doing uh, for some time and I don't claim to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, um, but I can still explain some aspects of it. What he's, he's interested like me in the question of emerging concepts. So he's very much written this tool and Rob has asked him, we see it more and I absolutely think we should, but he's basically done a basic outliner, but what is different is that the outliner enables, well, first, the outliner is built on IPFS with all that brings in terms of data ownership. So, and that's one aspect I don't want to go into. It's its own thing. But in conceptual terms, it allows to explicitly point to facets of emerging thoughts. And so you can name not only the facet, but the role. Like, and this is very much for me a topic mapping concept, right? When you're describing a concept, you're saying, well, in this role, you have this aspect, and in this role, you have this aspect. Or you could say from this perspective, but you're still naming the perspective through a role. And that way, it's like topic mapping. So it's about creating these um, uh, frames, if you're familiar with frame theory, with uh, implicit meaning of the different facets. And then it becomes queryable as such. You can look who else has been using those facets, in what way, and what yeah. uh, it, it's about creating this um, web of interlinked personal perspectives on emerging concepts. And the distinction between role and value and uh, is very informal. Uh, it's not a it's not a technological advance that way. It's a, it's a expressivity style uh, that allows for certain types of interactions. Um, now the whole logic of sharing around it is uh, one one thing I find fascinating is that the, the way he does distributed queries, as he said, there's trace of reading. If I'm ask if I'm asking for my endeavors what do you have on this? There's a trace of my having asked and of my having 
received answers. So when he spoke of this trail of reading, it's about creating community around thinking together about something. Uh, I don't think I got anything wrong, Jerry, so far. No, Thanks absolutely so <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. The, um, just just one, 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 one sentence that, and that you, 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 you taught me the word, the ream and the subject. So it's out of the problem, subject, predicate, object. You just take the predicate bit and the subject or object, it doesn't really matter. That couple is, a free, is free, it's not tied into a hierarchy. It can be joined up by search, that's the key. And you can, that's the other thing which I never told you that. The point is that you can talk about something on any page because that the ream identifies the context and you, you can gather all the things you said about it, something with some intent or, or, or whatever. And it will be as if you put it, so, so it really, the, the key point is you don't have to go there. At the moment, the way we work, if you want to write on something, you have to find the Google Docs where it belongs. So that next time you can't find it. This way, you just write wherever you are, whatever you are, whenever you are. And let the system find the connections and bring it back to everything that is relevant, even indicating the relevance and history. Sorry, it just you, no, 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 no. Just, that's that's very useful. That was just such a beautiful way of. Uh, but you perfectly, perfectly clear about that. Yeah, thank you very much. I hope that's clear, and I think yes, you should show it at this point how you do it and how you interconnect concepts in your system. Well, next time I do that. Yeah. <laughs> Tease. <laughs> You're no, 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 because, because, because this is relevant. The, what is relevant here is the, is the indie hub bit. You know, I, I, it, you don't have to go, you don't have to have trail marks to, to be able to interact. And in fact, that's another thing I didn't say. Didn't, 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 what it opens up the possibility, which I'm already talking to Mark. Uh, to 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 Anagora and and Interviki uh, or, uh, or Fedviki, with this you can create an Interviki, which basically joins every wiki with the readership and the writership as an external thing, and you can do it to anything. That's the that's the that's the other thing. It's, it doesn't have to be wiki. Wiki is just something that I'm really interested in. I'm interested in 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 and eventually this is. This is uh, what you need to have, have cross to for sort of interoperability from the point of view of Indie Hub. And in fact, this is what I'm going to do now next. I can have any, I can plug in, plug out to LockSec. I don't care. Or Rome, I won't do that, but LockSec, yes. So just because so that, that means it would enable people to do their knowledge work in the or Navigator, that's another one I want to make work, or Canopy. You can, you can use your, your favorite uh, uh, network th thinking tool and know that you can actually connect and share with anybody else. And it doesn't matter what, that's the interchangeability of application. That's what it brings, yeah. So, Gary, let me ask a question um, coming from a person without as much technical background. Help me, can you help me understand a, at what point the your you know indie lab is at from a practical standpoint if somebody wanted to build an app or something knowing that indie lab was ready and you know ready to go is there is it ready for that is it if i wanted to build my next um presentation and which you just showed right and i wanted to use indie lab is that can other people use it yet is it like what at what stage is your is the project and um, what are your next steps kind of thing? Like how practical is this? Because you talked a lot about the philosophical part and I wasn't a, I couldn't tell which part of those concepts had already been incorporated into your build and which part were still yet to be realized. I can answer. Yeah, I, I, I think, uh, uh, I hope uh, we can, we can, we can uh, but that's another thing. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I, I, I want to be available so anybody reaches me on MetaMost or, or Telegram. And, uh, and, the, and uh, I, I would like to, I'm bored a few people, Wendy, I would like to do that. And I, 
and because uh, I, I this this is really need me I really need feedback on that one. But as far as uh, this presentation thing, uh, I think I think what I what I probably would would, would be well advised to do is to speed up this integration with the uh, with uh, with Logsec because that's a stable editor and and everything uh, or or Anagora because my editor is really experimental because it's actually that's the locus where all the interpretation and all the extra stuff is going in so it's uh, it's pretty robust but 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 it isn't I mean I the other day I lost some didn't lose but it, it screwed up so so it's not it's not not it, it it is at this stage when when people who are interested in the ideas we could actually really start code code designing and developing. And, and and understand it and be and take it. The 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 indie hub part is 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 much better because uh, because uh, the not the marks are the indie hub part is is much better because the concepts and the ideas are very simple. The whole code base is not that not that not a big deal. And the whole point is that I want to do do like what Mark Cunningham is. I'm not uh, like yeah. We are in the same business as with the wiki. I want, want to share, share this idea, like you shared the idea of the wiki of collaborating on the web. This is the same thing. I want thousand indie hubs to, to try to, to bloom. Because for me, the important thing is that paradigm shift. That's what I care about. And that, 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 that's, where, uh, that, that, that's where it really should. I mean, we, we're going to have in the in the love in the hub on open collective, so it, it can be supported that way. I want it to be really open and collaborative. So that's uh, that's why I'm here is is to recruit interest and, and see if anybody is interested in in working, finding out more about and 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 exploring these possibilities. Yeah, is what I answer to your question. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, I, I gotta make it accessible these things uh, on Tuesday. So, uh, and you could just come to it and and comment and join the discussion within Indie Lab. So, so that's that's the other thing. I think the the, so, the other yeah yeah. When is the onboarding and and where and that? obviously I'm interested. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when and where, Jerry? Well, I, 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 I think Tuesday and Thursday afternoon, we can, we can fix the time. If, if we are enough of us, if you, if you just quickly decide whether it's going to be five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock on Tuesday or Thursday, I, I really would like anybody who was in this call to, to, to be able to come. And Which then, time zone? Well, uh, the CST, CST, Central European time, yes, yeah, CST. You know, so, this time was perfect. Six o'clock my time is perfect. It could be could be earlier, it could be later. Uh, around this time is a good time. Yeah. And we can advertise it on the on the on the matter most. So Tuesday at noon. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm like this. It out there. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nine o'clock PDT, yes. Tuesday at noon is perfect. Tuesday, same time, I should say. Since Tuesday, we're all the same time is perfect. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And how do people find you this Tuesday and Thursday at the same time? Uh, I think I think I think I be, uh, we'll discuss it. What would be the best? Uh, I got Luma. I got uh, Meet, Co. Whatever, but. Uh, I, I would be happy to happy to do it with, within the flotilla or, or the way this is set up. Uh, I think that would be probably the best, really, because Peter is is the hub here. <laughs> I, um, Kiri, I think you should set up. Uh, you should you should have a Zoom channel. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. You should just okay. set one up. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 Although now that I think about it, unless you pay. It, it's going to be limited to forty minutes, so maybe. <laughs> no, I I got meat cop. I got uh, got uh, yeah. I I I I sort it out. Okay, and 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 and. I, and no, I. Yeah. How about how about if I make a? I'll I'll make a Zoom channel. Yeah, that would be good, because it, me, it could could be could be together with all the other things. You know, I don't, don't have. So to it'll be a, a separate Zoom than this one, but. That would be good, and then you can you can advertise it on. Uh, on on the flotilla 
Uh, I, I think also you, you should set up a channel on Mattermost, a separate channel yes. for yeah. Indie, Indie yeah. Web or trail marks or whatever. Uh, call, it, call it Indie Lab, Indie Lab or Indie Hub, yeah. yeah. Do you want to do that or you want me to real quick? Yeah, yeah, please do, please do. In, Indie, Indie Lab, Lab would, right? Indie, Indie Lab is the, is, is the catch-all because it's, it basically builds everything. It sort of uses and integrates them at the same time. And that's the one, that's the user-facing thing, the, the details, you know, just the Indie Hub separately or, or Indie Net. Oh, I didn't. And it's obviously it create the Indie Net. Yeah. yeah, yeah so. Oh, and I, I, I lost the last slide. So I'm, I'm really, this is really inter-intellect, augmented inter-intellect. That's what it is. Yeah. Potentially. So Jerry, do you have a link that you want people to explore? I can put the Google Doc that the three of us created, Yumi and um, and Yen. Do you want to put in a link to IndieLab or your GitHub? I, 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 I put things into the Google Doc. That's a good idea because that's everybody got that. Yeah. And then that's if you guys, if you and Yen yeah. need to change it, right? You're changing yeah. it in one spot and everybody goes to the same spot. So okay, yeah. so I'm going to put the doc in the in the chat right now. Yeah, that would be the best thing to do. Yes, 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 yes. Who Thank aren't familiar much. with Mattermost or don't go to Mattermost very often or have no idea what we're talking about when we say Mattermost, then, <laughs> then there's the document for today. Yeah. Um and when um whatever channel is going to be set up for ongoing meetings or whatever. Yuri, again, you could add that to the document so that people have one place to go to know, yeah. you know what the schedule is and when you're available or what Zoom to Zoom or other place to um, connect with you. Yeah. If you want to put in emails or, you know, Telegram, you know, contact info, that would probably be good as well in case people, you know, a few months from now decide, oh, wait, there's a thing that I want to talk to them about. Well, I mean, I mean, hopefully on Tuesday, uh, you will be set up in this sense with your own, or with, with Indie Lab and hopefully we'll connect and then then all this can happen. Uh, you know, we can discover that that way as well, link it all together, yeah. Uh, Jerry, I feel like uh, we just Eric, scratched the surface here. Uh, uh, Eric had a question about hypothesis. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. I noticed you used hypothesis when you commented on my uh, GitHub, and I found that interesting. Like it just took from my web page, and you were able to add comments, and I was able to read them later. Um, I've I uh, I'm trying to make uh, Massive Wiki easier for people to use. Massive Wiki has for a while been able to publish to a website, um, so people can look at a, a Massive Wiki without doing anything except having a web browser. I'm, I'm starting to think that hypothesis is a good way for enabling people to comment and, you know, dis discuss a wiki page. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to start using that with massive wiki too. Yeah. I can just say the, I didn't have time, but we, the, my entire or anybody's sort of hypothesis, it gives you a social annotation network and it's a perfect anchoring for these emergent personal networks. Because if you want to anchor it into something known and want to be able to dis be discovered, and all you need to do is have a hypothesis account. And that hypothesis that name can, can actually actually be the, be the, the thing. And the other thing is that uh, it's already, is that all my hypothesis annotation are accessible from mind graph. So, so basically you can, you can, uh, you can, you, and, uh, I'm just figuring that out how, how to make uh, how you can actually add uh, links to anybody can add, add, add links to to any hypothesis annotation which delivers them to that particular uh, part of the interpersonal knowledge graph to the context where it belongs so I think that's uh, that, that's in the works but uh, that again uses this whole point that there is no server anywhere yeah thank you Yen, you're muted. Sorry, a common Zoom mistake. <laughs> um, uh, one thing, I just wanted to comment on, on hypothesis and one of the things that Jerry and I have talked about, uh, one of the first application groups that we've identified to use 
in the lab is um, researchers. And so Jerry and I, Jerry came up with the idea of an open research commons. And one way you can actually do apply hypothesis, you can use it in um, citations in research papers. So if you comment on, you know, whatever you want in a research paper, that's what's your salient, those are the salient points in the research paper. And, and so you can, if you cite a research paper in your own research, those are the actual very granular salients of, of that research paper. So it's one of the ways that um, we're thinking about using um, data as a building block. Um, like with, with hypothesis annotations. And of course, um, those annotations are also a way that they're like, um, like fishing bait for uh, if you comment on a LinkedIn page or some other page, Facebook, whatever, you, you make a comment, uh, your one sentence comment, and then you, you attach your uh, hypothesis annotation link. People go there, they read it, they find all your comments. They can then, um, find all your other annotation pages, and then they might be interested in coming into your own mind graph in your, in your Indie Hub, in, in the Indieverse. So it's a way of uh, like attracting people to come in to the Indieverse or the, into the Indie Hub, your Indie Hub. It's, it's not coming, come together. That's the big difference. That is the thing, join. You know, they're not coming, I'm not there. You know, all you have is, 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 is a, is a is a is a content address content address for the capability. Okay, you can deliver it in many ways, but that's what it is. Yeah. So what is I have a question about um, the sort of like annotation of websites. Um, what are the kind of most important fields? Is it just like text annotation, or is there um, a field for like privacy, like, do you want only certain people to see this annotation? Like it's private to you or do you want it to be a well, public well, annotation? Well, well, uh, yeah, two, two things. Uh, the whole, whole thing set up, I set it up with hypothesis because I like them best, but in, in spirit with the, with the philosophy, which I probably didn't manage to get across is that you can plug out to any annotation tool the very concept of the web intent is that as long as you, you articulate that, and as long as the target, uh, target application makes that tiny little client side uh, adjustment to handle those intents, okay? So, so it, it's a hypothesis to, to specifically allows you to create groups and everything. But the whole point is that once you, once you join up any annotation tool, any annotation tool, uh, could be Wavery, Memex, whatever. There are hundreds of them. The point is that once you, once it's part of this, the Indiverse, the great thing is that you are no longer you're not isolated because you can always go to the person, and through the person, doesn't matter what tools you use, you should be able to get their annotations from whatever I, I, whatever annotation tool they they use. There, there should be an intent for it. I'm not making it. People who are interested in doing that will we'll, we'll make that tiny little. It's this is why top priority for me is to integrate with FedWiki because FedWiki effectively gives you the way of actually tinkering the web, adding new capabilities in the browser. That's what FedWiki is for. It's, it's a doing wiki, it's not a knowledge wiki, not just knowledge. Uh, so I don't know whether I answered the question, but. Uh, but FedWiki, but the opportunity specifically allows you to do groups and all that. And the other thing that I uh, that this gives to hypothesis, and I talked about it with them, in, and uh, and they like this in the last meeting. That uh, at the moment, lots of students use hypothesis annotation in school. And if when 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 we, when we manage to join hypothesis in the in the in the in the hub together, then they can actually inter in, interact with hypotheses at school within the LMS, but all their annotations or the annotation they ever seen, they'll have a copy of. Now that's, that's important because when the student leaves high school, you know, they don't want to lose all that. So, so that, that's the other really, really important, important aspect, the, the emphasizing permanence and enduring 
and you were in print and sort of lifelong learning really yes thanks jerry um i i have to tell kind of a personal story about web annotation um and i am behind the, the ball uh behind the curve on on web annotation um for a selfish reason or a stupid stupid um egoist egotistic reason um i i was introduced to web annotation in, in 1997 uh there was this really cool programmer named ping um who built an annotation system for um uh, for the Foresight Institute. And uh, I think this might be the first one. And it was an amazingly, you know, amazingly cool idea. Um, and it had trouble, 1997, this is super early uh, in the web, it had trouble getting traction. And uh, there were a bunch of hypertext geeks who were super into it. And the Foresight Institute is a whole nother really cool uh, group and stuff like that. Um, this is also kind of the middle of the dot com boom, and I don't think they were directly inspired by uh, Crit, but there were a number of commercial vendors of web annotation software because I guess it, you know, the ideas kind of bubbled out into into the world, and then it turned commercial, and the commercial web annotation systems uh, there were a few of them that popped up, and they were junkier and and built around a crappy business model stuff like that i think they basically and and there was at least one that was pretty good and because it was commercially oriented it got more traction than crit um, i'm not sure that it was technically better but it it wasn't horrible as i remember and, and it was kind of good to start using it but then then it flamed out so after that i i got selfishly or egotistically or whatever, I, I got turned off by web annotation in, in like 2000 or something like that. So as it's as it re-evolved, as Hypothesis came into being and stuff like that, I was like, not only like not interested, but I was anti-interested in web annotation. So uh, at this point, I'm kind of embarrassed that that's, that's true and that happened. But, um, but anyway, um, the delicious was also um, a big thing at the same time, um, and I love delicious. And it, it's a sad story how I, there's another delicious and um, uh, there was a shared calendar system too that was just mind blowingly cool. Um, uh, Yahoo, this, this is a, there's a big classic story. Yahoo got big and fat and stupid, um, and then they started buying small companies uh, like Delicious and whatever the, the calendar tool was, and then they starved them for resources and killed them essentially. But they didn't they didn't pop them out into they didn't let them go either. So they were zombie companies. Flickr ended up getting even. Flickr was big, but it also got swept up into that that um, thing where these companies that were doing amazingly cool stuff and the founders got cashed out a little bit, um, bless their hearts, that's good for them. Um, but Yahoo um, structurally internally was set up to, to make them fail and then not let them come back to life. And it was just horrible. Um, but anyway, so uh, it would be awesome to get back into web annotation and Hypothesis is a good way to do it. Um, uh, I like Memex too. I'm actually a Memex user. Um, it's it's still rough and under development and it's it's not as solid and maybe it's as solid. Maybe that's the wrong way to say it. It's it's a rougher experience using Memex um, and it's more bleeding edge. Um, uh, yes, uh, thanks, Rob. Rob back channeled me. It was upcoming. Upcoming was amazing. This calendar tool. Um, it's like you know shared calendar back in you know 1998 or whatever. It's like oh my god. Um, just, uh, just a bit more annotation. That's it's it's a fascinating topic actually. Memex is very ambitious in its uh, annotation goals, but I think the reason the the story and I remember so many of those annotation tools. Like in uh, at some point, the the W three had uh, Anotia, which was a browser with built in annotation. It was a full browser optimized for annotation. Uh, there were many efforts, but now we have a standard for web annotation, which 
hypothesis almost follows, damn it. Uh, <laughs> and, but still, it's there. It's a standard. It's usable, and it, it gives a basis for the concepts. Uh, and we have hypothesis is open source, which does totally change the equation. I mean, if hypothesis, the company dies, we can keep using hypothesis, the whole tool infrastructure. So, oh, it's, it's, sorry, sorry, it's better than that. They got money set aside for guaranteeing availability of the data for 50 years or something. That's the real thing. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very, very sanguine about the value of the new annotation ecosystem. Now, I don't think annotation solves all the problems uh, because you know we have individual annotation and how do you make the links between them? And so many people are trying to, to do that. Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the web free storage, this is not practical to actually, whatever you wanted to annotate, you create, you, you save a copy of and you annotate the copy. This is what I do with all the PDFs now. Mm -hmm. Any PDFs, I, I, anything, anything, anything of real, real long-term value, I just put it on, save it on web free storage. That's good for, good for, for, for the web anyhow, and, and, and annotate it there. And the, 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 or even better for things, I can just turn it into HTML and annotate it inside clear marks. So it's not an annotation anymore. It's it's your notes, so part of your notes. Yeah, Yuri, if I if I'm um, so you save it to uh, Web three file storage, and then you annotate it from Web three file storage, right? So then the uh, uh, Eric had uh, a, a question about transclusion. So. The, the value of saving it to Web3 storage is that that's content addressed. So anybody who saves it from any source, like yeah. if it's a PDF, for instance, they might've found it in lots of different places. If you save it to a content address system like Web3 file storage, and then annotate that, everybody's annotating the same document, whether or not, you know, wherever they found it, however they got to it. Yeah, and, 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 and it's so, so it's like half of transclusion. It's but yeah. the, the hypothesis is actually a bit better than that. In that, yes, uh, IPFS gives you content addressable sto uh, storage in as the hash of the PDF, but hypothesis will actually detect. Oh, even if it's not exactly the same hash because it was compiled a bit later or whatever small alteration, yes, it yep. it's the same DOI. So I know yep. that it's it's yep. the same document. Yep. So yep. Uh, yep. hypothesis is actually smarter about document identity than yep. just yep. Uh, yep. But, the IPFS but, but, gives you. But the, the, the saving to F is, is important because the, the, the life expectancy of any random web page on the web is under 100 days. And also they will just improve it. All the annotation you made in one version on the web is gone, no longer available. So anything that is important, I save and annotate. To, to, to be absolutely honest, that's also the, the, the role of web archive, but uh, yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah, but the, I, I, I mean, this is what the web archive is doing. They, 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 they going all in on IPFS they because are. They, they consider the idea they don't want another other uh, other library of Alexandria movement. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So Rob asked a great question about uh, if we all start using hypothesis more, do we need to be in an open global mind group or a flotilla group or a massive wiki group? My and I think my answer is don't worry about making a group. A group is would be a good thing for like a class, one class. Um, but maybe we can start using tags like slash, uh, hash uh, open global mind or hash uh, massive wiki or hash. Yeah, yeah that, that's a better solution because the because the, the group is very restricting. So, and uh, of course, if you are put it into groups, people don't find your annotations outside, which is yeah. which is half of you know lost half of the value of uh, of hypothesis that people will discover. It keeps it, it, pri it keeps it private. Yes, which is not necessarily desired. 
So how can, how can I find annotations that Pete has made, or I guess with the if you can Pete, you can Pete search tag, if Pete tags it, then I can navigate if, by that tag. Yes, you if you, if you if you know if you know the if you know the the hypothesis you the name of the user, you can actually search for all their annotations by that. Uh, okay, I will give you two two. You, you, two you can create groups, and then you have everybody you can search by group you can search by user you can search by target document it's pretty the, there's a search api that pretty much absolutely does brilliant okay so this is this is uh, this is mine but you can if you if you put pete or anybody else's username and of course you can just delete the delete the user altogether, and you can see whatever is coming in today now nah. you know so uh, but there is a, there is an amazing tool which is which I built my which I'm using within within Minecraft. This is this is this is the one. The one, one uh, you one want to use. share your screen, probably? No, no, no. I don't want to share it. I just want to send you the link. Uh, has has somebody built something where you can subscribe to users? It looks like Hypothesis doesn't do that natively, but you you something that did what what was the question um i'd like to subscribe to you for instance jerry um and i was wondering if somebody's built a tool that lets me have a list of people that i get notified about when they're i i i don't i don't 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 i don't think they support sub, subscribe or anything but, not uh, not natively but, uh, but there might be yeah. a third-party tool that somebody no I think this is this is this is something uh uh I, I I could add to whatever whatever I have in the hub already because it's it shouldn't be difficult. And in I'm any not, case, no, yeah. no. But in hypothesis, the question is: Is that something hypothesis does for you? The answer is: There's an API point for it, and it doesn't work. <laughs> and oh, I've okay. been on on their backs, so it's like we want subscriptions. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's so, not, you know, the, the, so here's I, a third party. Um, I don't know if a third party one, it would be easy to, to build. I've been, by the way, looking at uh, something quite, uh, Jerry, J uh, Jerry got us started to look at quine.io and I totally recommend everybody look at quine.io. Uh, it's, if you want to build a subscription system, this is it. Which, uh, what was that? Can you put the um... quine, Q-U-I-N-E. Quine. Um, um, uh, I was going to ask, uh, just raised a question, which I think was related to something Vincent asked earlier, is the, the privacy of annotation and the filterability from, from, the, from the annotator's point of view, privacy, and from the recipient's point of view, filterability. Um, are, are an issue that I, I, I'm not sure how they're addressed. Because I mean, obviously you can annotate things in a public way. And if through a third party or whatever, you were subscribing to Jerry or to Pete, um, you would see everything they'd annotated. But, you know, if I'm only interested in what Pete has to say about this subject, or I want to screen out what Jerry has to say on this subject. Is is that possible from the recipients end, and from from the annotators end? Is it possible to say I want to make this public? I want to make this only viewable, you know, on a hypothesis to my family members or, you know, or people who are interested in X. Yeah. This is, this is the, well, first of all, you, you, can, you can have private annotations in hypothesis that's native, but that's exactly why, why I, I, I think uh, the integration within the hub and, and hypothesis gives you all these modalities easy to add because the difficulty of doing it on the server side at a central point is a is is a lot is is a nightmare. It's a security and, and and privacy nightmare, but because in the in the in the hub provides you these communication channels which you the participants control, nobody else. 
you know, you can you 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 can set up, and then you can just the same way already as it is already. If you if you send a search query to next week to me about a topic, you could say, oh, and I would like to see your annotations, you know. And on your behalf, I should be able to 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 get this is this is the real solving the real problem for hypothesis because once you put something into a into a group, you don't have public access. That's one of the first things that I want to do, like a little clutch, which enables you people who are authorized because it's obviously EPIC protected, they could actually make, make public things, uh, private groups public if they want, because that's a missing, pro missing capability in hypothesis. Once you, want, once you created a, a group, only the group members see it. That's something I really want to do for a long time. It's, it's, it's exactly that. So what I'm, uh, thank you for your question, because it really points to, the, to, the, to why it is important to make this paradigm change, because all these questions become so much simpler. It's the same thing as Solid, Solid is achieving that, that this idea of the personal online data store in their case. Uh, the fact that the data is already sharded by individuals makes corporations jobs so much easier as too. Because what they do, they, they suck in all the individuals, they put a big database, and then you have to untangle it instead of just sending a query somewhere in a, in a decentralized process. And the other thing is this is scalability, instant scalability, because you know it doesn't matter how big is your network. There's no you know, there's no, you know, there's no, no, the, oh, go from one to zero to one is a hard thing, but most decentralized models are going from one to N is a real challenge, an engineering challenge that's gone. It's just not there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question. Yes, great. Yeah. Okay. Great stuff. Uh, so we're at a uh, hundred minutes, right? Um, maybe this is kind of a good time to take a break. Um, Mark Antoine, I would love to have you demo uh, Quine for us at some point. Maybe next week, if that works out. Could be done. Um, I'm I'm working on Quine, and I'm. I'm dividing my effort between Quine and another database that looks really amazing. It's XTDB, uh, XTDB, which is uh, closure, more frame-based. Like Quine is basically um, event-based RDF, if you will. And XTDB is event-based, more frames. I think it's less powerful on the event side than Quine is. Uh, the Quine event stuff really looks well, very well done. Uh, and, and XTDB is obviously a dog to get running. But uh, I do like the fact that it's frame-based instead of just RDF. Well, it, they, it, they're not using RDF, but their data model is isomorphic to RDF. Why are they not using RDF? I don't get it. But anyway, that's me ranting on the technical aspects. Yes, I could, des <laughs> I could describe Quine. <laughs> that, that would be great. <laughs> um, uh, for the folks who haven't heard it yet, um, Mark Antoine is big on event streams um, as as a way to do stuff, and so a, a little bit a little bit of that pitch would be great too if we've got folks that would be interested to hear it. Yeah. Qu Quine is basically graph queries over an event stream, so you have an event stream of no attributes. You can consume it from Kafka. You can store it in Kafka, but you can consume it from anywhere. Store it in Kafka or something else. And then it will maintain an index in RocksDB or Cassandra or quite a few index databases and use that index to allow graph query over not only the current state of the graph, but the state at any point in the event stream, the past state at any point in the event stream. And then what is cool is you can have a standing query that says, okay, just give me a new event on another stream whenever something matches that standing query. So that's what Quine is. 
I've described it. Awesome. Um, uh, at, at least me and probably other people still also need the, um, why, why would I use an event stream rather than a database thing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> which we don't have to do necessarily today, but, no. um, uh, you know, but for instance, like hypothesis uh, annotations, you know, that that's probably something that would be better in an event stream rather than a database. And, and I can't explain why, even though I know it's important. Uh, I'm not sure this is the best case, but in general, when we're dealing with anything that changes in time and you want to retain memory of the changes, and that's especially using for reasoning, because you want to know, why did I start believing that? Why did I stop believing that? Uh, you, want, uh, yeah. you want justifications. And you want, like, if you stop believing something, that means that anything that was deduced from that fact needs to be revisited. Yeah. Uh, and this is where you need history. And this is where event streams are wonderful. The other beautiful quality of event stream is if you're collaborating, uh, you don't have to worry as much about maintaining coherent state. You just have received the event streams for everybody. They become eventually consistent. You make things consistent as they come. Uh, and you don't care so much about, oh, does this come before that? Well, you have the whole history. So you can resolve history conflicts by looking at the whole history. So now we're, we're edging. <laughs> Sorry. Now we're edging into hyper knowledge too, um, which is uh, which is also in there too. Uh, so so not only do you want to there's know there's so what, much overlap between what Jury's doing and what I'm doing with hyper knowledge. I mean, we've been yeah. discussing it for a long time, and we've been let's face it, uh, sharing and stealing ideas from one another for a long time, and that's absolutely cool. <laughs> Uh, Jerry, you're mute. <laughs> I think I think the best thing is that with, with the I mean I definitely uh, uh, I didn't have the event event stream as high on my agenda before I met Mark Antoine, but I talked to him and ever since I'm a believer, you know. So <laughs> it just and in fact I did know that uh, that all these all these relational databases which which tr try to do the thing that they should that that is not not worth doing anymore is impose uh, consistency at right time, okay? It actually, when, when the, the recovery phase, you know, if, you, if your machine crash, the reason they can recover, because behind the scene, there is an events log. <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's already an event log, you know, the yep. event log is, without event log, you won't have real, real uh, robustness, you, you know, real consistency, so. Yeah. Okay. And and at at a very minute scale, um, essentially event streams are also behind things like collaborative text editors like Hackenbee or Google Docs. So everybody's making changes, and then they get resolved eventually. Is I'm curious about event streams as as they relate to um, to feeds of any kind, you know, RSS feeds, um, Twitter feeds. I mean, you're, you're calling this an event, but it's really an interaction around an information nugget or... Yeah. Web intense, yeah. So, I mean, web I, intense. Sort of, what's that? Web intense, web intense are exactly intense. that. Sure. Is, okay. is messages in an event stream delivered yeah. peer to peer. The, 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 the even lots of, sourcing lots of overlap too between that and the way that um, collaborative groups are using the RSS feed aggregation and filtering, and then they're commenting on it on Factor. So I'm, I'm just I'm the, 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 the the question the, the the architectural question. Sorry, we're really diverging here. Yeah, yeah. But, are you building your RSS feed from your database? Are you building your database view from your event log? <laughs> like what is the source of truth? And event sourcing is an architectural principle where the log is the source of truth. And instead of having a database, I mean, you can have a database that holds the state, why not? No problem with that. But if the database crashes, you don't try to reconstitute the database, you just replay your event stream. <laughs> because the event stream is the source of truth. 
and, and you index like Quine what it does, it's, it's exactly that. They're using RocksDB and Cassandra as an index to the Kafka stream. And I think that's the right way to do things. The, so you can completely scrap the database and you've, not, you've lost strictly nothing because the source of truth is the event stream. Right. I mean, I mean, I mean yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the, 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 I, I'm going really radical. I'm, I, I followed Alan Kay's advice in the Simplicity video 10 years ago when he said he, he, every 10 years he takes an A sheet of paper, writes on everything we know to be true and fundamental in computer science, sticks a no in front of, and see where that points to, okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm flipping everything. ARPFS gives me no database. Not, not just no, no SQL, no database, thank you very much. The network is the database. So, so if, if you follow that logic, uh, I mean, uh, it's not even steam is the, is the truth. The source of truth here is your, is the, every individual's personal, personal data store. That's the source of truth. Well, but is that data store structured as a log or as a database? I mean, the, the... it's not structured. It's structured like knowledge. No, no, but yours, yes. But I mean, the, the underlying that, you're, you, you, you may be using level DB, for example. I do have key value stores. That's, uh, but that, but that, but that the key value store is just basically is not a database. Can't call a key value store a database. Why not? Because it's just it just it's just an efficient implementation of a JavaScript map. I don't care. It's still a database in that. Okay, okay, okay. That's fine. It's, okay, it's, it's a data. <laughs> yes, it is a database. But the point is that that I only need that one little database. No, no complexity. I, 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 and no I complexity. I'm against every complexity. No, no, and I, and I perfectly understand what I what I'm saying is uh, there is a value in when you're doing like that's individual work i see the point when we're federating and you are federating oh no 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 i want i need i need your databases i need your federation i'm just saying that, that there are there are scenarios where where you don't need that and i'm yeah. already in this in this in this saying no to everything by going interpersonal yeah so yeah and by the way, I'm describing right. a, an architectural position. I'm not saying it's the thing to do. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. It sure. always depends. Yeah. But what is event sourcing? It's saying the database is just a transient view of log as source of truth, and it has great benefits for yeah. coordination. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, folks. Thanks everyone for, for people who are new to this. I just wanna say this was a little bit unique for, for our uh, flotilla calls. Um, really ni nice to dive in and glad that there was such rich conversation around Gary and Ken's work. Um, for those who, again, are new to the space, we usually have a chance for just people to go around and share you know, whatever's top, whatever's at the edge of what they're working on. And it, you, we usually bounce from person to person and provide support or feedback. So that's more of the usual um, pattern. So I just wanted to let people know before they sign off. It also often doesn't usually go this long. It's an hour, hour and a half, usually at most. So um, so thank you all for staying for as long yes. as you did. Thank um, you very much. Thanks, thank Wendy. You. Thank you, Wendy. Thanks, thank you, Wendy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah.